All right, so uh, it's been a while since we did a shop tour, and I think it's about time, but this is the messiest that it's ever gonna be. I hope. All right, we really wanna thank Rust-Oleum for getting involved in this project, helping me overhaul my entire shop. It's awesome working with companies whose products we've already been using for years. And when they said, you know what, we, we feel that the Rock Solid is a really good fit for your shop, I'm all about that. <laughs> now, gotta keep in mind that my shop is horrible condition, so if it can hold up in my shop, then it'll definitely hold up in yours. And this, in this episode, we're gonna show you how to prep the floor. There's a lot involved because my floor has been disgusting. Um, 10 years of heavy industrial use on that that we gotta clean up. But we'll show you how to pour in a smaller garage, like a two car garage. Um, your prep work might not be exactly the same because you might have fresh concrete or not uh, giant oil stains everywhere, but you still have to pour it the same way. Next video, we're gonna show you how to do it on an industrial level. Uh, the prep work will be the same, but it's a lot quicker to mix the product and lay the floor down. So let's get into it. Here we go. We're gonna try and stay a little bit more organized and a nice clean shop floor will really help with that. Um, so we're gonna use Rust-Oleum, the uh, rock solid floor. We're gonna take some grinders and clean the floor down, drop it down. I think I got another hoist, so I might put a hoist here or here, I haven't decided yet. And doing the floor, I gotta plan where I want my other hoist to go because um, I need to drill through there and uh, make sure there's no heating lines running underneath. So um, this hoist was always meant to line up with this door, but um, I ended up having to buy a four post first. We're gonna get rid of it because it's not bolted down yet. Um, when your shop is clustered like this, it does mean that you're busy. Uh, I spent a lot of late nights out here. Why am I holding on to that? Why, why do I have those on a shelf? Just get rid of them. So um, they're going to scrapyard. Everything on that bench is going to scrapyard. Everything on those shelves upstairs is going away and then call it good. We're gonna redo upstairs. I have a whole living room and couch set and kitchen up there that you guys have never even seen and we will get there. Uh, we've done a few episodes on running your own business and part of that is being organized and efficient and I've been losing some money on efficiency and just walking farther than I have to and whatever but it takes a long time to set up the shop the way you want it and this was always going to be kind of my just for painting uh, random small stuff hanging up I got pipes hanging up that I just hang my hooks off of and it's worked pretty well but the space isn't useful enough and if we go out back here I don't know if you guys have ever even seen this um, it's kind of a dark hole. I got a little bit of garbage, some GTO stuff, and some trim laying under the stairs. And I got this spot. Um, drill press, really crappy lighting, <laughs> uh, hydraulic press, and my lathe. And this is basically all I use. That's a bunch of garbage. I had a bunch of paint stuff in there. Um, those two benches are garbage. And it's just taking up space. So what we're gonna do is knock this wall out and we'll incorporate this space which is not usable into there uh turn that into kind of a, a sandblasting painting welding keep the dirt and crap over there so that the uh other stuff doesn't get affected this is actually a, a door that swings down it's on a cable on a, on a pulley so i can close this door and close everything off I also have my heat system here. Um, this is the hot water tank that gets hot water from the house. And then it gets supplied through the pipes. You can see the pipe coming through the floor there. And then I have a pipe uh, with a whole bunch of wires just randomly going from here to the house. You know how long I've been looking for that shovel? Why is it there? This is my geothermal unit. And then this, this is a pipe that gets buried, goes to the house, a whole bunch of Cat 5 and some random wiring. I should clean that up and I will. When you finish building a shop and you leave little things like that, you're like, I'll get to it. Well, it's 10 years later, so we're gonna get to it. This was kind of an afterthought. I always knew I was gonna have the mezzanine here. Um, and then it was kind of a neat workspace, but then I closed it in, but realized the space isn't big enough. So let's make it big enough. You go hang right there for now. Perfect. Right where it's supposed to be. Here we go. I 
Okay, so this space is much better other than those stairs. I think the best thing to do with those stairs is just get rid of them completely. And we're gonna put them uh, where my metal working tools are. And this will be more of our manufacturing area. So we're gonna keep the shear, the English wheel, drill press, and normal press all in this corner. Those stairs are gonna go. I've got two engines here that have been sitting there for four years now, five years now. This is out of a, a Studebaker. I have all the pieces, I got all the pistons, everything brand new, bearings, ready to go back in again and assemble those. I got rid of the car before I finished the engine. Don't use it, it's time to get rid of it. So, about a year ago I grabbed this container, which seems like a good idea at the time, right? But you just start throwing endless garbage in here. Um, like this computer I got with my hoist. And you know, I could make the alignment machine work. Other than the on-site training system is a DHS. Now you guys don't even know what that is. But you got charged a dollar if you didn't rewind that when you were done. Anyway, after the scrap, although I almost make a cool arcade game. I should sell this to Stefan. Oh, oh, oh. look at this. Job matrix. Yeah. Oh. I think I should sell this stack of paper. Perfect. Okay, so. Yeah, that was my shop. If you guys have been watching the channel for a while, you've you've seen a pretty messy shop, a pretty unorganized shop, and it's crazy. I've had this shop for 10 years, but I've been on the property almost 20. So I had an old two-car garage where I worked out of, but I built the house and the shop in 2009. It's hard to imagine where your shop is gonna be 10 years after you start because plans change. I used to work on bulldozers and excavators in here. Now we're working on race cars and building our own, own trucks. When I first started the shop, I started with this plastic um, on the walls. The plastic was cheaper than steel. It's flexible so that if you hit it, um, you could pop it right back. But the main thing was cost. Now I always wanted to do wood inside the shop, but working on heavy equipment, I was afraid that hydraulic oil or a line would blow at some point. I would spray oil all over my walls and you'll never get that out of the wood. Now, I can take the plastic because it's not flammable and put it on the inside of that shop and allow me to put the wood up that I always wanted to. From here, we're going to continue pulling off the rest of the plastic. We're gonna pull our benches out. Um, we're gonna pull these benches out. We're gonna grind the whole floor. We're going to epoxy the floor and then put wood up and then start hanging some nice art and that on the wall. It's a very exciting time. So let's get into it. All right, so we basically got the shop floor kind of clean-ish. <laughs> and before we start grinding tomorrow, we're gonna put some of this uh, Rust-Oleum Epoxy Shield Oil Stain Remover. All you do is you splurge it on um, the oil stains. We'll scrub those in. Um, just leave that overnight. Come back in the morning and wash it off. And what it does is pull all that oil right out of the concrete. I think that corner might not have some oil spill, but basically this entire shop has been covered in oil at some point. Good thing I have a lot more. Here we go. Okay, so this morning I pressure washed the entire floor and I left that because there's puddles go to all the low spots. I'll paint those, I'll mark those out. We might have to put some uh, floor leveler in there. You can see that if you had a garage that only ever had cars parked in it, you could just pour the floor on top, but I've got stuff like that, leftover paint and grease and stains and everything that I want to get rid of. So what I did was I rented this uh, floor grinder from Battlefield. It's just a 220 volt. Um, Great guys, they gave me a hat, but um, they didn't give me enough stone for the bottom. I don't, they said it took nine, it takes a lot more than that. So I got some empty spots, which makes it kind of vibrate a little bit, which isn't great. They're also used, they're not, they're supposed to be a lot deeper than that. So that's a little disappointing. We'll see how far we get. I'm gonna start grinding around all of these spots, just marking up the floor. And then I'll, I'll sweep up and hopefully I can bring the floor down a little bit. It's working pretty good actually. I poured this floor with five or six of my buddies that all owed me favors. And what that means is I didn't pay any of them. 
That also means that you don't get that perfect floor, but we can actually fix that a little bit now. So I got my laser level. I was always high here, um, and the water was always difficult to get out the door. So um, I've been going at it for a bit, and you can tell here the aggregate is starting to show. So I probably took, um, I've done about six passes over it now, and I probably took about a quarter inch off. Um, just one little strip here. Um, now's the time to do it. I could probably get the floor done a lot quicker. Um, maybe two passes is enough to get rid of all the crap off the top around the puddles and then the last pass I'll go through the puddles and make sure that we scuff the floor enough that uh, the epoxy is going to stick. Um, one thing I do want to mention, you cannot pour a floor without it cracking. The point of a cut when you take your saw and you make a groove in the concrete afterwards is the crack will follow the groove. I didn't cut my floor, so you can see the crack here. Um, that's nothing to worry about. I have cut customers floors when I poured the floors for them and it's basically just preference. My creeper doesn't hit a bump in the crack in the floor, although it does hit a hit that little thunk when you uh, when you cut it. Um, I'll show you my setup real quick. Uh, I had the vacuum beside it at first and the vacuum didn't have enough suction. The, ho the hose would fill up with the uh, with the with the dust and then it wouldn't suck anymore. So I shortened it. Um, I also have a quick attach with a pair of ice grips. So this just follows it around. And then the filter clogs pretty easy. So um, with it running, even the filter clogged, it doesn't seem to make a whole bunch of dust. It kind of leaves it on the ground. So um, I sweep up, I just sweep it out of the way quickly and then clean the filter and do my last pass. It actually does a pretty good job of cleaning up the floor. So um, those spots are just water because there's snow outside um, that's not oil. It's actually cleaning up the, uh, the spots from yesterday um, are all gone after the pressure wash. It actually looks really, really good. Let me show you some of the big spills. Um, there was a big one right here um, and just a little bit left. But I think after all that, uh, the grinder will take care of that. So, um, yeah, I'm going to carry on grinding. i got a long way to go and a short time to get there. Isn't that a song? Did I just come up with a song? All right, so back from Battlefield. And uh, their explanation as to why they only gave me nine teeth instead of the 18 is because most people um, don't have enough power or amperage to run the machine with all the stones in it. So they say, we generally only give nine stones out to anybody. They didn't really have anything to say as to why I didn't get new stones. I said I would much rather pay for the new stones rather than get free ones um, that don't do the job. But the shop is done. It's not bad. Uh, there's a low spot right here. Um, so this will all get filled in. So I'm not too worried about that. Um, all the low spots here and there, like you can see that there was a line here. Um, I think there's still an oil spill here. So I put more of the, uh, the, the oil puller on there. Um, but when you start to see like a line where the grinder's not hitting it, it means that there's a high spot right there. There's a big gouge here. Um, that's from when I built the greenhouse in here and dragged it out of there. There must've been a piece of gravel in front of the I-beam uh, when I yanked it out. The low spots will put a floor leveler in there just to get rid of those spots. And you can tell here, I'm starting to get down pretty low because this is actually my wire mesh. Um, I think that's uh, rust under there. But overall, I'm happy with this. It will work. Okay, if you're doing your own garage, or your own shop, you might wanna pull your, um, your panels off, the lower panels off as well. If you can, mine's just a couple screws. And I am not regretting doing that extra step. This is pathetic. Uh. All right, so if you check our uh, garage build series, which has the link right here, I explain how I put my strapping between the posts. So these are six by sixes and uh, two by six strapping in the flat. What that does is give you a place to um, put your insulation. It gives you strapping on the inside and the outside right away. What it also does is stop the rodents from going in between. If you have a two by four nailed to the surface here, that there's a space for a rodent to uh, go. Now, whether you want to admit it or not, you will get rodents in a pole barn. Um, and this is what they do. They chew, they chew at the insulation and make a nest. 
Uh, the point of the spray foam is that the insulation doesn't fall. You'll still get little rodents that come in. They eat all the insulation all the way around. And as you go, the insulation just keeps settling and settling. Before you know it, you've got no insulation left. Um, you can see the power of the, the insulation here. If you've ever pulled on a piece of styrofoam, it, it's stuck in a couple spots that let go off of the wood. But in here, it, it basically just stuck to the wood. And, and just rip the insulation apart. So the first time they came and sprayed, it actually sounded like shotguns going off because the insulation was shrinking so much that um, it would just bang, pull apart. And uh, I say I got mice issues, but these are all snake skins <laughs> from a snake that made it to theirs. And you can see, I can, I can see the light outside from my board and batten. Definitely not gonna use this insulation company again. I was instantly dissatisfied when I seen this. Okay, so pressure washed again, and you can see over there it's already starting to dry. So those are all the high spots. Um, the water obviously ran off to one side. Um, you can tell I was talking about that uh, line right here. It's already starting to dry. I'm gonna go take a break. That will show all my puddles. Um, I'm gonna mark those out with some paint and we'll put some floor leveler on that before we put the rock solid on. Okay, used up all the old spray cans in the shop. Outlined my low spot. I got another one over there. I got another one over there. And a little circle over there. Next thing we're gonna do is put the moisture stop in. So we've established that concrete has cracks in it. Um, I bet you didn't know that it was porous and that your dirt, um, according to the state of California, causes cancer. So the dirt actually releases a radon gas could, um, and that gas is very, very minute, but it creeps up through the concrete and it'll actually push whatever you're putting on the concrete off. Um, if it's not the radon gas, then it's moisture, and this moisture stop will prevent that. So we're just gonna spread that out, broom that on. It kind of prevents that from coming up. A good way to test that is to tape a piece of plastic to your floor and leave it overnight. If you come back in the morning and there's water droplets underneath, then you got moisture coming up. Um, it will push whatever coating you put on there. Doesn't matter what it is, it's gonna push it off. So uh, you wanna be careful with that. Again, prep is everything. Um, as you can tell, we're spending five times longer getting the floor ready than what it's actually gonna to take to pour the floor. All right, floor is nice and dry again. That was five o'clock, so that's about four hours drying by the time I'm done. You might wanna give your floor a little bit longer to dry. Uh, depends, uh, with the heated floor, it really accelerates the, uh, the drying time. solid you get um, a roller with a stir stick in between your citric acid to um, open up the pores on the concrete and let the rock solid really bite mixing pouch which has part a and part b basically you just roll one into the other and then mix it together so it's a perfect mix of one product to another and then your color and we went with a um, silver bullet this um, concrete etch so that, you mix one of these with two gallons of water. Um, we're going to spread that around with mama's um, flowering can. And she said it's okay. Um, anything to get me out of the house? Is that what she said? We're gonna be mixing that with water, spraying this around. We're gonna scrub that in and then pressure wash one last time. <laughs> get everything, uh, you, you really wanna make sure that you get this stuff off of the floor, but what we really want is to be able to wipe your hands on the floor and not have any dust or um, concrete come up. 
And I already have that. It's already nice and clean, but I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna do it anyway, just because it's gonna take me about two hours and I think it's worth it. So here we go. So for smaller areas like a two car garage, uh, Rock Solid makes it really easy by giving you a pouch that has the chemicals perfectly matched part A and part B uh, with a burst seam in the middle. So you roll part A into part B, mix it very well for about two minutes and then just pour it into a pail. Add your color, mix it in very carefully and slowly until all of that is mixed very well. That takes about five, 10 minutes to do that. So none of this is high VOC? No, it's ultra low VOC. Yeah. Is there an improper way to mix it where you get air bubbles in it? Anything? It's actually pretty forgiving. Yeah. Uh, the only uh, only problem is when it's still really loose and powdery. If you go too fast, you end up with a mushroom cloud. Yeah. And then yeah. you look like you're ready for the disco because you're covered in glitter. Luckily, my audience expects that of me. So <laughs> if you're not filthy, you're working for a TV show. You're not actually doing anything. <laughs> You've got about 40 minutes to lay the product. Uh, up against the outsides, use a brush to just get nice and close to your wall. Uh, you might want to take good care, make sure you don't get any splashing up on there. My finicky stuff is not my best work, but we're gonna have cabinets all the way along the back. Um, tools up against pretty much every square inch of wall space. Super easy, pour it up about a foot away from where you left off and then take a roller and in a circular motion to get the bowling ball effect, mix that in. And then overlap as you're uh, doing your next pour just slightly so the swirls mix really nice. Works really well if you have one person mixing product while the other person is laying it. It's about the same amount of time. So uh, two people can do a two car garage very comfortably in the matter of about two hours. Okay, so it's been a day. Uh, very happy with the floor. Uh, there's a couple spots, like I left my grinder there for a second, probably something up against the post. I stopped, left the machine on, and left a mark. So you are gonna have to get rid of those. Kitty approves. After a day, they say you can put your car back on it. So I'm working on the Mercedes, and this video will already be out. Um, you can see I track dirt from outside right away, but uh, we're waiting for more product because I did put it on pretty thick. People say you use more product than what's advertised and that is 100% true. If you want it thick and you want this nice swirling looking bowling ball look with uh, nice shiny reflectiveness, then you are going to have to get extra product. I recommend grabbing lots, um, even picking up 30% more than you need um, and you can always bring it back if you don't use it. So. Uh, this section, which is 20 feet by 48, I use 20 bags, so 10, um, 10 boxes of it. I do see a little bit of dirt in that. If you see that, um, it is really hard to keep it uh, spotless, but um, that's the conditions that I'm into. It's already a functioning shop. There's um, lots of people in traffic uh, as we're working, so you might want to vacuum as you go, then again, the vacuum blows air out the back and disturbs stuff too. It's a shop. Um, I do different conditions if it was a house, but uh, very, very happy with it. So. Carry on as if normal, here we go.